very blessed Palm Sunday to you. I ask you to please stand and face the back of the sanctuary as we sing our processional song, which is on the inside of your bulletin, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah. Continue on the top of 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this here confession, I, by the virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I ask you to please turn to the intro on the inside of your bulletin, and a slight change to the bulletin. We will be singing this to the tune of C. Hell. 
help come quickly to my aid. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me, they wake their hands. He trusts in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. We continue with the Kyrie. God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for Palm Sunday is from Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation as he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea. And from the river to the ends of the earth, as for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, 
taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel is from St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied on a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the full of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of the Lord. With one heart and one voice, we confess the holy faith as expressed in the words of the Nicene Creed on 191. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn number 442.
in the name of Jesus. Amen. My friends, if you have ever found yourself in a church or perhaps reading a book or a magazine or listening to a podcast or even having a spiritual conversation where you are encouraged to pursue God, ask yourself this question. Yes, ask this question. Did your pursuing of God, was it enough to obtain Him, to obtain the Lord Himself? And once you obtained God, were you able to keep Him by your pursuing? Now, dear friends, tragically, there are many corrupt churches and religious hustlers in America that have set up what we can only call a carrot-on-the-stick religion. A carrot-on-the-stick religion. Actually, we could be a bit more specific in describing this carrot-on-a-stick religion. Maybe we could perhaps say it's a chasing a carrot on the end of a stick while running on a hamster wheel religion. That is right. In the name of Christianity, religious hustlers, religious hustlers, well, they have had thousands of well-intentioned Christians running on a hamster wheel while chasing a carrot on a stick. The carrot obviously being, that carrot on the end of the stick obviously being the pursuit of a so-called good life in God. Now, we must keep in mind that these average Christians that attend these churches, these hamster wheel churches, the Christians that follow this kind of theology, well, it's rather obvious what's going on, at least for us looking on the outside in. Oblivious they might be. You see, they listen to the preacher man, they see the carrot on the end of the stick, and they know that they need to be spiritually busy to obtain that carrot. So they get busy running. They get busy pursuing, and they get busy chasing the good life with God. To make things worse, though, these well-intentioned Christians, they look at everyone else in these churches, and they see them being extremely active in their pursuit of God. And so they say to themselves, this church is on fire. Look at all the religious zeal and energy in the church. People are really serious about their faith. They are really pursuing God himself. However, there is a catch. There is always a catch. What they do not realize is that the religious hustler, the pastor, has all the members of the church running on a hamster wheel while chasing the carrot on the stick. The church, the pastor, and the members have the appearance of being very, very spiritual indeed, as they all pursue God, but really are not accomplishing much of anything at all, except for making a lot of noise and a lot of commotion. Tragically, what people do not realize is that the religious hustlers always, they always keep God at a distance from poor and naive and well-intentioned Christians. Keep in mind that a close God would ruin the whole system. It would destroy the whole system indeed. It would destroy the incentive of pursuing God. A close God to the individual, to the Christian, or a God that perhaps would come to the Christian would perhaps get them off the hamster wheel. Indeed, it would destroy the whole religious system. Tragically, in these kinds of churches, these corrupt religious systems, God must always be kept at a distance. He must be that carrot on the end of the stick. So they must pursue Him. So the church members must always be encouraged to pursue God on the hamster wheel. That is how the church stays in business. That is how the leaders maintain their authority. Put Christians on the hamster wheel and dangle that carrot on the end of the stick in front of them. And that church can keep these Christians coming back more and more each and every week. Chasing, always pursuing, and never finding, never obtaining. All the religious leaders, all that they have to do is move the carrot stick a little bit closer each and every week to give the perception that they're getting closer to that carrot on the end of the stick. And if they want to give up, if these Christians find themselves wanting to give up, all the religious hustler needs to do is to shake that carrot on the end of the stick and encourage them with more law. Yes, encourage those prisoners with more law. Run harder, reach higher, dig deeper, pray harder, commit more, dig deeper. And soon you will enjoy the joys of God himself. Not only is this kind of theology crooked, 
heretical, and manipulative. But also, it is the exact opposite, my friends. The exact opposite of what we hear in our readings from this morning. As we heard in our readings from the Old Testament, we're to behold what the prophet Zechariah states. The prophet Zechariah, he states this. He says, Behold, see, your king is coming to you righteous and having salvation is he. Now, did you hear that? The king is coming to you. Dear friends, you must realize that Christianity is not about your climbing. It is not about your pursuing. It is not about your huffing and puffing to obtain a somehow distant God. See, God is neither distant nor missing nor running away from you as if you need to keep up with him. Consider our gospel reading from today as well, that gospel reading from the gospel of Matthew. What is Christ doing in the gospel reading? My friends, he's entering Jerusalem. He's traveling towards the cross. Yes, towards the cross. And later in the week, we hear, we will hear this week, this holy week, what does Christ do? Well, Christ, he takes the cross. He goes to that cross. He takes the cross and he carries it all the way up to Mount Calvary to bleed and to die for you and in your place. In other words, in the reading from the Gospel of Matthew, we do not see all the people in Jerusalem somehow gathering together in some sort of great mission and pursuit of Jesus off in some far distant land and some major expedition. People were not busy gathering up all the crosses in Jerusalem, then leaving Jerusalem to bring the cross upon Jesus himself. It was quite the opposite. It was quite the opposite indeed. Jesus was on his own pursuit of the cross as he rode into Jerusalem that Palm Sunday long ago. Think of it this way. Your Jesus, your Jesus is no ordinary king. And the Christian faith itself is no ordinary religion. You do not grab a hold of the cross and seek out Jesus. But Jesus grabs a hold of you and seeks out the cross. You do not find Jesus, but he finds you. You do not bleed. You do not bleed for Jesus, but Jesus bleeds for you. You do not ascend to Jesus, but Jesus descends to you. Furthermore, mark this, the gospel, it comes from Christ, not from you. Your faith comes from Christ, not from you. Your works come from Christ, not from you. You get the picture. Perhaps one of the most powerful stories that I've ever heard on this very subject indeed is from a pastor who was teaching confirmation long ago. The pastor, he put a drawing on the old chalkboard, if you recall those old chalkboards. He put a drawing on the chalkboard. He drew a line on that chalkboard and he wrote the word God right here and he drew a little stick man uh, representing mankind himself, showing that mankind and God were on that same level, on that same path. And then the pastor took that old eraser and erased the very center and created a big, huge chasm. And he wrote the word sin, demonstrating how because of the sin of Adam and Eve, there's a chasm between us and God, how sin itself separates us from God himself. Then the pastor asked what God did to remedy this chasm, this great chasm between God himself and mankind. And the kids obviously said, Well, he sent Jesus, and the cross became a bridge between God and man. The pastor, he he smiled, and he snapped his fingers, and he pointed at those kids. He said, right on, kids, right on. And then the pastor proceeded to take and draw a cross in that great chasm. And the pastor, after drawing that cross in the great chasm, the cross that was essentially a bridge between God and man, the pastor then said, What happens next, kids? Several of the students' hands bolted up, and they begin to respond. After God gives us this cross, well, it is a bridge, and we just walk across. We walk across indeed. The pastor is about to erase the chalkboard and move on. However, one of the girls, she was actually in a wheelchair with some physical and minor mental handicaps. She raised her hand. She said, Pastor, you are wrong. Pastor, you are wrong. We don't walk across. Oh no, we don't. For Jesus comes across and he picks us up and he carries us home. 
he carries us home. The pastor in the story said that he encountered one of the greatest theologians that he had ever encountered in his entire life, his entire life indeed, a 13-year-old mentally and physically handicapped girl. We do not cross the bridge on our own, but Jesus himself picks us up and he carries us home. He carries us home indeed. Blessed baptized saints, any time you find yourself drifting into religious thought that has you seeking but never finding, chasing but never catching, climbing but never reaching, you have permission to simply stop. You have permission to get off the wheel and drop the carrot stick. You do not pursue Christ. He pursues you. And if you have friends that are trapped in this wretched and horrible religious scheme, you can tell them as well to get off the carrot stick, to get off the hamster wheel, to drop the carrot stick, all of it together, to kick it to the side of the curb, to kick it to the side of the curb indeed. If their church has them chasing carrots on a hamster wheel, especially during Holy Week, well, they're not a Christian church, but a pagan church. And perhaps have a religious hustler as a pastor. Hear this loud and clear. The story of Palm Sunday and Holy Week are not about you and me pursuing the cross. It's not about you and me forgiving sins on our own accord, believing and dying and rising, but rather it is about Christ who pursues the cross, Christ who forgives, Christ who bleeds, Christ who dies and rises for you and for me. This is the whole nature of the Christian faith. Indeed, the whole nature of the Christian faith. Christ rode towards the cross and he rides towards you today, not upon a donkey, but in, with, and under the bread and the wine to do what you cannot do, to forgive you of your sins. Yes, right here and right now, Christ is pursuing each and every one of you. He's reaching out to you. He gives you his word in the absolution. He pours his assurance into your ears through the preached word. He lays his body and his blood upon your tongue and he grants you faith. He gives you assurance. He gives you hope. He does this for you because he is not distant. Christ is not missing, but is your ever-present help right now and right here. Baptized saints, get off the wheel. Drop the stick. Escape the wretched theology of religious hustlers. Christ pursued the cross that Palm Sunday long ago, and he pursues you today and every day as well. He is like that good shepherd who seeks out the lost sheep. He's like that woman who seeks out the lost coin. He's like that father who runs out to the prodigal. Yes, runs to the prodigal. He is the Lord who rides to Jerusalem to pursue the atonement of our sins and the resurrection of life. He does this all as gift for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Ask the congregation to please stand for the offertory. You may be saved for the offering music. As a way of reminder, the offering plate is in the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can also be conducted by through the church website or given through to the church office.
ask the congregation to please stand for the prayers of the church on the inside of your bulletin. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, show to us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna, save now, in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Uphold this world in your order. Preserve the church and the preaching of your word against all enemies. Bless our homes that parents and children may serve one another faithfully and grow in instruction and faith until life's end. Give health and wisdom to all who serve in public office that their authority may be used for the benefit of our people. Lord, in your mercy. We bring before you the sick, distressed, and needy, especially... We pray for this morning, Ashley and Brian, Carl, Charlotte, Connie, Darcy, David, Dory, David, Aaron, George, Gloria, Jeff, Joellen, Justin, Marilyn, Melissa, Ordine, Philip, Rita, Shane, Sue, Tim, and Tom. Give your abiding comfort in every circumstance that in Christ we shall not die but live and declare his works. Lord, in your mercy. Look with favor on all communicants at your table. Grant that they would come penitently and in faith to eat your son's true body and drink his blood for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we here remember the sufferings and death of your son, your dear son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you where he ever stands for us as our own high our own high priest gathers together we pray from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the lamb in his kingdom which has no end graciously receive our prayers deliver and preserve us for to you alone we give all glory honor and worship father son and holy spirit one god now and forever amen As we continue to the service of the sacrament, we continue in repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, or one of our sister congregations, we do still invite you to please come forward, kneel, and receive a blessing here at the altar as you cross your arms. And if you would like to receive this wonderful gift of the altar, please talk to me after the service about membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
To help our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is a new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Ask the congregation to please stand for the number of minutes. Give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Ask the congregation to please remain standing as we sing our departing hymn, hymn number 443. You may be seated.
Well, very blessed Palm Sunday to you today. Uh, if you have your bullet announcement, she'd ask you to pull that out for a couple brief announcements here this morning. Uh, do you happen to have that announcement she can steal from you, Desi? All right. As you can see for this week, a uh, brief mention here today, following the second service, we have a continuing education for the Sunday school teachers. Uh, as we look to this Tuesday, no men's or women's Bible study, so keep that in mind. Uh, Wednesday, we are not having our Lent services, uh, obviously, uh, because we've switched to Holy Week. But the confirmation students will be meeting on Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Um, as, as is tradition here the last couple of years, we're watching the Passion of the Christ. And so the kids are encouraged to bring pillows and sleeping bags and so forth. We're going to hang out and watch the Passion of the Christ from 4 o'clock to a little bit after 6. So keep that in mind, uh, parents of the confirmation students. On Thursday and Friday, we have Holy uh, Monday, Thursday service at 7 o'clock. Friday, we have our Good Friday Tenebrae service. And then on Saturday, keep in mind the youth are doing some baking. And then there's a Holy uh, Saturday, Holy Saturday Divine Service at St. Mark's on Saturday at 7. That's a joint service on Saturday at 7 o'clock. And then Easter Sunday, keep in mind, 6.30 in the morning and 8.30 and 10.30. We have three Divine Services, Easter services uh, all three are going to be different. Uh, Pastor Roth and I will be preaching at all three of those back and forth. And so in the midst of that, we will have an ongoing pancake breakfast that will go at 745. I'm not sure exactly the closing time of that, but come on out for the pancake breakfast or one of the services or all three or two of the three. That's uh, simply your choice on that. Um, brief mention, you may say to yourself, okay, what happened? Uh, why were we playing uh, the piano today? If you can smell in the air, you have a little bit of a burnt toast smell. Uh, I saw some commotion back there. Beth was on that, and I smelled a little bit of the burnt toast. And put two and two together, uh, we're having some problems with the organ. And so I think it's all unplugged up there, uh, which makes sense. Uh, Peggy has mentioned to me a couple times over the last two months uh, that the settings have not been right. And there's been a couple times where it just shuts off and doesn't come back on. And so... Your feet didn't get started on fire, did they, Beth? <laughs> yeah, so I didn't see her running away from the organ up there. Um, but something to keep in mind, seriously, just a little small tidbit for us to consider as a church. And I want this to be an example for us to consider. There's no such thing as an emergency in the church. There's one, and that's an emergency baptism. But there's no emergencies in the church, none whatsoever. Even in death, there's no emergency because Christ holds us. And so if an organ goes out, or if a building burns down, if something else happens, we know the truth of what Scripture says. Grass may wither and what the flowers may fade. Organs may burn out, buildings may burn down, but the word of the Lord, what? Endures forever. So there's no emergency this week. We sing. If we don't have an organ on Thursday, Friday, or Easter Sunday, no emergency. We confess Christ. We hear Christ. We hear his word and sacrament. That's the nature of the church. The gates of Hades will not overcome, so we rest in Christ. He is going to be crucified as we will hear this week. And he will rise, which he has did, indeed did, done for us. So no emergencies in Jesus. Lord bless and keep you guys. God bless.